Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Sonia, also known as SG from Let the Lady Speak Podcast, where we discuss life, love, dating, and relationships. I also promote self-love and healing. Today we are reviewing Put a Ring on It Season 2, Episode 8, Vision of Love, Sabotage. Before I get started, as always, I thank you guys so much for showing up today. Thank you for the compliments on my hair. Y'all not getting a twist off row today, though, because, woo, child, um, it's a new process for me. I'm learning my hair, and it's a journey, and I'm okay with it. I'm happy with it, actually. So, thank you so much for the compliments on my hair. Thank you so much for showing up again. I appreciate you for being here. I appreciate you guys for interacting with the videos, commenting for the likes. And again, just for spending your time with me. I know you can be anywhere else, but you decided to spend this time with me. Thank you so much. I am honored. All right, let's get into tonight's episode. We pick up where we left off with Kai and Darian having their conversation about you know, getting closure and her decision, she's going to put the whole thing on blast, which that, you know, I have no issue with that, but I do have, I have a lot of issues and I have to retract something that I said last time, but that's for later as it relates to Alexia, because this episode gave me a different perspective and a little more clarity, but back to these two, there's so much here. Number one, number one, where I'm going to start is we're all accountable for our own behaviors, right? Again, I have no issue with Kai saying, I'm going to blow up the spot. I'm going to let all your business hang out because you did me wrong and I'm going to do you wrong, right? Okay, no problem. But here's the thing. You were a willing participant in this situation. You knew this man had a woman. And on several occasions when that camera was on, I don't care what he said when you guys were behind the scenes because what counted was when the cameras were on because that is what he knew Alexia would see. He let you know that he loved her and he was not going to leave her. You chose to, slept with, to sleep with him anyway, right? And I know a lot of people are going to say, well, you don't know what he was doing or what he was saying. It doesn't matter. You know why it doesn't matter to me? It doesn't matter to me because he operated out of confusion. I feel like Kai is too old to be still playing this game. I don't feel like this is her first time at the rodeo. I feel like she knew what she was doing. She felt like this was a competition and she was about to come up. He told her this is our kind of, she's like, what about when you said, that this is our condo. My condo is your condo. He like, yeah, I'm about to let that condo go. Like I'm letting you in the condo go, right? Why would that be okay with you? So this is my conversation with Kai. Why would any of that be okay with you? This man is showing you exactly who he is. And is that someone that you are okay with long-term for you and your children. What exactly did you think you were going to gain? Because he's showing he is not a man of integrity. You know he's cheating on his woman. You know he has cheated. And I honestly have the feeling that they know each other. Or they've seen each other before. If not, there's something. That, there's a piece to this puzzle that's missing. Right? Because they are way, way too. They are really comfortable with one another. You know what I mean? And I think Elena is small. But I don't think this is her first time at the rodeo as far as this kind of dynamic. But really, it's unfortunate. Kai, you're a beautiful woman. You have children to be accountable for. This man didn't show you anything that would say he will be a good candidate to have in my life. Why would you come on here and embarrass yourself? Because you're not looking like a boss. I know that's what you say. I'm a boss. And you may be in a lot of ways in your life. But right here on this show, how you have shown up, you're not. We're accountable for ourselves. What we do will always come back on us. It doesn't matter. It will always come back on us. What you did in your participation in that relationship will always come back on you until you make it right right? Which means change your behavior. You don't necessarily have to apologize to Lex 
I think you should, but you don't have to, you don't owe her that, you know, cause don't get me wrong. Now the onus of this relationship is on Darren, but this is not a case where Kai didn't know he had a woman and she moved in. She knew he had a woman and was intentional on letting him know you can get me and you can have me. And I'm really to ride with you throughout this thing. She really thought that Darian was going to be her. She was that confident. And I'm sure he helped her along the way, but she missed all of the red flags. He told her I loved her. He told her I'm not going to leave her. And he let her know that he was the help. They had a whole conversation about being the help. He said, well, who's going to make me feel the way you make me feel? Right. So now we show up here and she's like, oh, you use me. When he told her, you knew what it was. He meant it because I told you now, whether you take it or not, ladies, a man will tell you, don't fantasize. Listen to my video I did about Alexis. Don't fantasize a relationship. It is what it is. He let her know what it is. And he also let her know he didn't really want her. He didn't see the value in her. He didn't respect her, right? But she thought she had the upper hand. Ladies, don't ever do this because, you know, now in today's culture, they make it seem like this, like the whole side chick thing and all of that. It's a big, it's a, it's a big deal. It's common. Everybody acts like it's, all, it's okay. Now, don't get me wrong. That's been around for forever. Cheating in the next room, if you know anything about the blues, like it's been around for forever. But you always got to remember what you put out on the universe in the universe it's going to always come back to you when you stand for what you've done and who you are as a person all of that is going to come to you you are accountable for yourself no matter what anyone else does so i'm not giving kai a pass on that i do feel for her and i really hope that she learns to love herself and respect herself more because although she wants us to believe that she does her behavior throughout these episodes and in this situation and the decision that she made is very telling that she doesn't love and respect herself the way that she may even believe that she does. And that's honestly no disrespect. That's just how I feel, you know? And because when you love yourself, there's certain things you're just not going to tolerate. There's certain things you're just not going to do. When you know who you are, when you respect who you are as a woman, certain ways you're not going to move. To any young lady that may be dealing in this situation, I'm going to tell you something right now. This is what you do. When a man starts telling you he's having problems with his woman, it is not your job to fix it. It's not your job to make him feel better. That's his relationship. You say, I am so sorry to hear that. I hope y'all work it out. If you ever become available, let me know. But I'm just here to tell you, ladies, when that man shows you who they are, when they show you who they are. Believe them. Same thing with the man, honestly, because this goes both ways. And then another thing is, will you see how a person operates with one person? Don't ever think that you're better than that person and it won't come back to you. They are who they are. You remember that. So what you see is what you're going to get to. You're not going to be better than the wife or the girlfriend. You're not going to make it better. You're not going to fix it. That's not your cross to bear and it's not your battle. Don't fight it. You send that man off and tell him to deal with his stuff with his wife. Because nine times out of ten, he may not even be telling the truth. He's lying. He They, they may just have a bump in a roll. He may just have an itch that needs to be scratched. He may be Darian type who just has all of these demons that he hasn't dealt with. And he's going to constantly need something to feed that hunger that he has but it doesn't mean he's going to settle down and be faithful and be good to you send that man on your way don't participate in the heartache and the heartbreak of another woman or another human being period don't do it I'm just telling you guys I have some stories I don't know I'm thinking about doing a dating series I don't know I got a lot on my plate right now because I'm back in school but we're gonna see but there's a lot to be learned from this situation now Darian you, sir, are, recount are accountable for your actions as well. And it's your job to protect the heart of your loved one. And it's your job to protect your relationship. And you didn't do that. And no, not only did you not do that, you disrespected this woman. She trusted you in this process. And what you did was spit in her face. What you did was break her heart and embarrass her. But Alexis, girl, this is a blessing in disguise. This is what you needed. 
it don't it may not feel like it right now i'm gonna get on her later but this is what you needed because this is what you needed to walk away people are reason seasons lifetime and darian may have just been a season in your life but you're going to learn a lot from this and you won't make the same mistakes if you really truly do the work and if you really truly take the lessons that come with this scenario um but yeah Darian, ooh, I'll get more on you later, sir. LaRonda and Derek meet up for their date. Derek has a very nice smile. Derek is a handsome guy. Anyway, they meet up and let me say this about LaRonda. I have some concerns. Hey, she hasn't showed up as her true self to, to date. Her representative has been full-fledged this whole this whole time so that's concerning to me and I'm wondering when is someone going to say something about it at Sean protects her but she flies under the radar she doesn't say much about anything we don't know anything about her family all we know is that she's showing up she's a spectator out of the group she's just there to nod her head pretend like she agrees with dr nicole on everything and watch everybody else with their issues she hasn't revealed herself at all and you know that's not on, on a daily basis that isn't anything that you should do but when we're talking about going to therapy in a relationship session yeah that's what you need to do and she hasn't done it you know and i'm ready for someone to say something about it um the other thing is i wrote down i made a note where i said and this is true this is what i believe i don't know if this is true i don't know her but she isn't as confident and as self-aware as she's pretending to be and i said in my last review or the one before then i can't remember LaRonda just wants you to look at Sean. She doesn't want you to see her, right? She doesn't want anyone to see her imperfections, her problems, her shortcomings, her weaknesses. This is all a game for her. She is constantly playing what she thinks is good chess, right? She constantly thinks she's, she got her poker face, you know, I'm a very polished put together and she's a beautiful woman and she carries herself well, but she's not authentic to she's not being authentic i don't believe i really don't i believe there is a reason why you're willing to deal with what you're dealing with with sean which sean has actually been doing the work we can say a lot about sean sean cries vomits he's emotional he's all over the place but he's honest about who he is and what he's feeling in moments she's not gonna let you see that side of her right and, and, and it's always a competition i'm perfect you know i'm together i have no problems people like that are a problem because for one they usually end up blowing down the line and for two you don't really get to know that person you're you're you don't know who they are and how do you truly love a person that you don't know you know, and when I say Sean hides her, I mean, he probably hides like her temper and things like that. But no one is no one has pulled LaRonda's coattail and say, listen, you need to show up here like we show up here. So I don't know. I find it interesting, but they talk and they have some things in common. And, you know, she's like he made a comment about basically when well, you going to tell your dude to poop or get off the pot. And LaRonda was like, oh, you know, people are fragile, you know, and he's like he's too fragile for that because like what kind of man is too fragile for you to put pressure on him which you know that's a whole nother discussion but she said well maybe there no LaRonda you like this you like this circle you like LaRonda likes for everybody else to be on display so we go to Jessica and Eric's house and they are you know talking about their mission statement. They're trying to work on the assignment. What's the mission statement for our relationship? Jessica has her little ink pen and pad. And um, it comes out that Eric didn't do anything for Jessica for Mother's Day and it hurt her feelings, which understandably so, right? I don't know what he was so busy with doing that he couldn't not have 
you know, had an edible arrangement sent to the house or ran and got some flowers, some chocolate, some something. We all know on Mother's Day is Mother's Day stuff. It's almost six months ahead of time letting you know that Mother's Day is coming. You can get all that you need to get. But in the previews for next um, week, he has some issues with his mom. So I'm going to save my thoughts on some things until I see really what's happening over there. But I will say this, a man with issues with his mom that he has not dealt with is going to always have issues with women because that's the first woman he loves and he trusts. That's the first woman that he put on the pedestal. And if she disappointed him or betrayed him or abandoned him, that is really, really hard for a man to get over. And it sets the stage for how he deals with women, right? Although I will say this, Jessica revealed her abandonment issues as well, right? Which I spoke about earlier on that she reminded me of someone who has abandonment issues. The bottom line is these two really need to really focus on themselves. They need to focus on healing themselves. Jessica needs to deal with the, the issues of abandonment and that strong desire to always want someone to give her time and attention to make her feel whole that that in she has a she's starving to feel love but she doesn't really know what that's supposed to feel like because she doesn't love herself like she should and i would like for jessica to really really take time to take care of herself and stop focusing on this relationship and family i know she feels like if we get married that will make everything all right and it's not going to make everything okay it isn't going to fix anything and then for Eric he is at a stage in his life where he wants another child she doesn't want children because she wants to just focus on her like it's you have to listen to your partner and determine what it is that you really want they are pushing for marriage but they don't even know what they're marrying they don't know what they want out of this marriage you're here on a show to basically give someone an ultimatum about getting married, but you don't even know what that looks like. Eric said, I don't know. I've never seen it. You know, Eric has a lot of issues. He has his insecurities. She's broken his trust. She doesn't trust him. Like they have all of these issues, but at the core, both of them are people who someone really, really hurt them and they have not dealt with that. And they don't have the tools to function in a healthy relationship in a healthy manner to get to where they're trying to get to, right? So they don't just need couples counseling, they need individual counseling. Um, and they really need to look to see is, is this really what I want? Is this the person I really need to be with? And I don't think they really asked that question because she is dead set on oh, you're gonna marry me, but you guys don't really necessarily want the same thing. And there isn't a solid foundation there. Um, it may be time to let it go. And it's okay to walk away from a relationship. My heart aches for Lex because I remember my first time being heartbroken. I remember my first breakup with the person who I thought at that time was the love of my life. And the most devastating breakup I had was with my ex who we were together on and off for six years and I really thought he was the one for me. And when you have been betrayed and you have given your all and your heart to someone and they mistreat that, it is devastating. And Lex, I am so sorry that you have to go through this, but I promise it's going to get better and you'll be okay. Just continue to do the work love on yourself, learn to trust yourself and just do the work. So Dr. Nicole and Lex have a one-on-one -on -one where Lex talks about Darian admitting to the fact that he had an affair with, that he cheated on her with um, Kai after like the first date. And she goes through talking through the whole realization and Dr. Nicole helps her with coming to a final decision 
and just talk on her through it. And if you ever want to know what therapy looks like, this is what therapy looks like. It's it's annoying at first. I won't lie because they have to gather the information just to kind of see where you are and what's going on. You want all the pieces of the puzzle before you try to put it together. Right. And then they help you realize what you're not seeing and give you tools to help you realize when things are wrong. Also, therapy helps you put words to emotions, feelings, and frustration. For Lex, the decision has to be love yourself and it all starts with you. You know, Dr. Nicole points out two vital things. Number one, that mature men don't tear down what they build. And that is so true because they're trying to build an empire, right? Um, basically, Darian is immature and he is. But Darian has a lot of demons he has to deal with. Right. And sometimes when people haven't dealt with their demons, you think we're hiding it and you're not hiding it. It's manifesting in different ways. I honestly don't believe Darian believe that he deserves someone to love him in a manner that Lex loves him because she truly genuinely loves him. Like that really was her friend, whether he was a good friend, uh, all of that, that has nothing to do with her. She felt like he was her friend and her best friend and she genuinely loved her. But Darian is scared and he doesn't know what stability feels like, like that this can happen. And it's scary because he doesn't know if he's going to treat it right. He doesn't know if he's going to be good enough for her. And so he sabotages it. And a lot of people function that way, but she herself has to learn to love herself. Dr. Nicole pointed out how, you know, you're loving on Darian, Darian's loving on Darian, but who's loving on you? You can't fill someone else's cup and leave your glass empty. You know, you got to take care of yourself. You got to love yourself. Darian is not really loving himself. Honestly, he's loving himself the best way he knows how, unfortunately. So, this was hard to watch. Again, my heart breaks for her because I've had my heart broken before and there is nothing like that feeling of betrayal is is a nauseating feeling. And I'm not going to I know a lot of people going to get on her and they're going to call her names and call her stupid and all of that. I don't think that's fair because anybody who's been in a relationship when you've decided to give your heart to someone and they step on it, it's not cool. You know, and that, that, that is, it's hard. It's a hard pill to swallow, you know, and then she's going to have to deal with herself later. And so we're at LaRonda and Sean's house and LaRonda, you know, has her pad out and they're talking about the wedding. And I'm like, wasn't the assignment to talk about your marriage because people focus too much on the wedding. Um, but they're talking about the wedding. They can't agree on the number of members of the wedding party okay but you know shine is part of a fraternity i don't know if she's or yeah i don't know if she's part of sorority or not but he you know he wants his frat brothers there he's like no i got a lot of people and they all come in <laughs> you know so we'll see uh, and then they talk about a destination wedding which i can see that because she loves to travel but i'm hoping as far as this conversation about children that they are just doing this for the show and that they've had this conversation about children before, but ultimately they want between four and seven. Sean definitely wants seven. LaRonda is like mm, between four and seven and she wants to adopt two. And he's like, okay, well, we're going to end up with seven. That's the bottom line. I want seven, but they start talking about divorce and what are your thoughts on it? And you know, for her, she's like, you know, no divorce for Sean. Sean's like, well, I've seen people stay in toxic relationships just so they don't have to get a divorce. And just because it's a marriage and no, I'm not doing that. I don't believe in ride or die. And I'm with you, Sean. I don't believe in it either. Right. But Sean said, you know, we need to show up, you know, the best ver versions of ourselves in our marriage. Yes, Sean, you are right. And that's what should happen. And you're this person that you're with right now, she's not trying to show up. She thinks she's at the best version. At least she wants us to believe she's the best version of herself. Um, 
And so LaRonda says in her confessional, well, you know, I think we're both going to just write it out and we'll stick together. No, he told you, I will divorce you if this is a toxic marriage. LaRonda, listen to what he's saying. If this marriage is toxic, I'm leaving. <laughs> that is what he is saying. Don't put words in his mouth. Don't project your beliefs and your wants and needs onto this man. He said what he said and he meant what he said because he saw that with his parents and it damaged him. And he doesn't want that for his kids. So you got to understand that. So Jessica and Sean meet up for their dates. I forgot they were dating this episode. It's been so much happening. <laughs> But they meet up for their date. They go on a high fly date, which seems like fun. I would like to do that. Um, and they talk a little bit. I'm not going to really go into that too much. Again, I still don't trust Sean. And I think Jessica needs to be single and focus on herself. And that is that. <laughs> that is all I have to say about the two of them. Just So Darian, Dr. Nicole, and Lex meets up for a final discussion between the three of them and you know Dr. Nicole asks Lex she gets there first how is she feeling and Lex says you know I'm feeling better now I think Lex finally got the answers that she's been searching for aside from why he did it which she shouldn't even worry about that's his problem it's not hers um she said I'm better now and then Darian shows up and in his confession he he says yes I cheated on her but 14 years is a long time to just throw away that's a lot of time to just throw away basically he will he will hope that she wants to continue with this madness and you know Darren you threw it away your choices your decision your behavior is what caused you to be where you are today so Dr. Nicole and um Dr. Nicole asked him what did you think this was going to look like like what did you expect for your outcome to be and you know Darian in his way he's been so accustomed to manipulating the situation right because Lex didn't have the solid proof that she needed that he's been cheating so he's always been able to blur the lines just enough for for her not to be completely sure right well now he doesn't have that option now everybody knows you know and you made a decision on national TV during the process where you were supposed to be deciding whether or not you want to be with this woman, where you've been saying you want to marry her for her own because she wants to get married, which listen to what the man says. But, you know, you're on this you're on this journey to prove one thing and you showed another. You show all her suspicions were right. You know, and Dr. Nicole basically let him know that he was selfish um, and that he didn't consider, he didn't think things through and he needed to be more mature that all of that she was talking. That's what she's saying. You're selfish. You haven't healed. You need to think things through and you need to grow up. There you go. And Dr. Nicole brings up the time that they've been together. And this is what changed my perspective on Alexis. I really now I think that she has like she said before she's had her suspicions but she didn't know she didn't have solid proof he likes to blur the lines and keep confusion going be mindful of people that keep confusion going because they're distracting you from something right which is what he's done very effectively now there's no now it is what it is right there's no blurring of the lines it is what it is all the truth is out because we all know this isn't his first time right um but she was 19 and she's been with him and now she's 33 she doesn't she doesn't have enough wisdom and i don't mean that in a disrespectful way but experience gives you wisdom she doesn't have enough wisdom to really know what she was she was over her end over her head you took an industry guy and a 19 year old and, and those two were together. He's had the right to not the right. So he's been able to do all that he's been doing because she doesn't know any better. She doesn't have that experience. She's never, I'm sure he was her first love, her first real relationship. 
um, her parents have been together. All she's seen is people stick together. She doesn't know. She may have had indications of some other things, but she didn't know. She wanted solid proof because again, he has always been able to Jedi mind trick her into believing something different. She loves him and she wants to believe the person that she loves. This relationship is going to teach her believe actions more than words, believe what it is versus what you fantasize. But this is the experience she's had to have in order to get to that point. And we've all been there. We all are a sum of our past relationships, our life, our trials and our errors. And so I know before I was like, oh, I don't think she's going to leave him. But now I realize she wasn't informed. She wasn't informed. Yes, Lex has some self-esteem issues she's need to work on. She's wrapped herself up in this person. True, I believe that. But before I thought you caught him cheating before and you've known he's been cheating, but now you have a problem because it's on TV. That was really my mindset. That's what I was thinking. I don't know if I said it or not, but that's what I was thinking. But after this meeting, I was like, you were a baby, basically. 19 year old, 19 year, 19 years old is young. And he, I think he's, he's older than her. I think about 10 years or so. I'm not for sure. Don't quote me there. And so she's an athlete too. You got to think about that. She's an athlete that went off to college and things like that. And she was overseas. So all you've done, all she's done rather was work out, train, eat, sleep, school, do it again. So she's been focused on that and not really focused on him. And he's been playing all of these mind games. I'm not excusing anything because I feel like you had a gut feeling. But this is her first time in this arena. This is her first experience. This is her first heartache, her first heartbreak of a, like a real adult relationship. From 19 to 33, she hasn't experienced anything else. So Alex was talking and, you know, she brought up some very good points. I'm really proud of Alex. I really, really am. I'm proud of you, girl. Um, she said, I feel like I have to love myself. I have to choose myself because, you know, why did you even do this? You know, he had no words. He was like, I just want to be there. I think we can be together while she finds herself. No, because you are confusion and confusion has no place in growth. Right. So, no, you got to go, Darian. You got to go and deal with you. Dr. Nicole was like, oh, that is the problem. That is the BS. And no, sir. <laughs> like, like, no, we're not even about to do that with you. OK, she was really trying to hold it together. But she wanted to say, Darian, if you don't get out of here with the craziness, the a absolutely not. You know, Dr. Nicole asked Darian, is there anything you want to say to Lex? And he grabs her hand. And oh, her face. I'm telling you, my heart hurts for her. I can't stand heartache. But anyway, um, he's like, I'm sorry. I'm lonely out there. And he tries to manipulate her in short and trying to, you know, make her feel bad that he's out in a cold without her and he can't make it. Don't leave her out there. Dr. Nicole was like, Mr. Darian, uh, that is a no. Not on my watch. Okay. <laughs> not on my watch. You're not about to pull this. Saying I'm sorry is not enough. And you don't even say what you're sorry for. He's not like, I'm sorry for hurting you, for betraying you, for cheating on you. He's just saying, I'm sorry. Whenever someone says, I'm sorry, Blake, just like, I'm sorry. I don't believe they're sorry. I don't believe, nor do I accept the apology. You're going to have to let me know what you're sorry for. Why are you apologizing exactly? But in this case, it doesn't even matter because guess what? This needs to come to an end. He's done enough to hurt this young lady. He's wasted enough of her time in good years. He just needs to go on about his business. So once Darian realized that the begging and trying to come home wasn't going to work because Dr. Nicole was not going to let that happen. <laughs> um, he said, I understand why I can't come home because it's the treadmill. And you're right. It is. It, it's time for this to come to an end. So, you know, as I guess he dropped the tear. So I don't know. And she wiped his face and Listen, it's going to be very difficult for her to change her patterns, right? Because for 14 years, this has been her partner and she really loves that man. 
But at the end of the day, for her, that was her friend. That was her best friend. That was her lover. That was her future. And it is going to be difficult to turn all of that off because she doesn't hate him. Lex genuinely loves him. She genuinely has unconditional love for him. And she said, I love you and I will always love you. And I felt that because I'm going to tell you, I feel the same way. Love my ex. Will always love him. But we don't belong together. We're not healthy together. The romance of our relationship will never work. Okay. And I understand that. But that does not mean I love him. When you really truly love someone that love doesn't go away. It's just how you choose to operate with that person. It choose how you choose to allow that person in your life. You know, I have people who I love dearly will kill a rock over, but they cannot be part of my day to day life just because they are not in a healthy enough state to be in my life without causing confusion and breaking my peace. And my peace does not have a cost. It, you can't afford it. You can't afford it. So I'm not going to even put it on the table for you to play with it when I know you're not going to do right by me and my peace and my heart. So that's a choice that I have to make. And that's been part of my journey of healing and self-love and learning that I don't owe anybody anything. Right. But it doesn't mean that what I felt for you or what I knew of you or what we had wasn't real and it wasn't genuine. She loves that man. She's going to always love that man. It's going to always be a piece of her. It just doesn't mean that they have to be together. She'll find what she deserves and what she's looking for. And I'm praying for her and her heart. And I am praying for Darian that he gets the healing that he needs. So Dr. Nicole advises Darian to go take care of yourself so that you won't sabotage another relationship. And Darian says in his confessional, no, you know, I did what I did and I have to suffer the consequences. And honestly, he's never had to before. So this is going to be new for him, but it's going to be growth for him if he goes through with it. All of the couples meet up with Dr. Nicole. Lex comes by herself. Darian isn't present. And Lex basically lets the group know that Darian and Lex are no more. Um, she tells them what, ha what happened and that's pretty much it. Sean was like, you know, basically take care of yourself and put yourself first. I'm like, all right, Sean. You know, meanwhile, LaRonda's over there like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm telling you, this is a spectator sport for her. She's just watching. She's not present at all. And, and you know, Eric looks scared out of his mind. Like, you know, <laughs> Eric looks scared and Jessica is sad. But Jessica said he dodged a bullet. She dodged a bullet and she's right. She did because after Lex explained everything, she thanked Dr. Nicole and the process for just allowing her to see. Cause she was like, I may have never seen this. I may have never known we may have been married. And she said that earlier too. And Dr. Nicole was like, oh, well you were seeing it and you saw it. If you had to sweep it under the rug, it was something to sweep. You weren't sweeping air, right? And so, so Dr. Nicole says, well, we're going to continue in the process. Let's talk about what you were supposed to work on. How does your marriage align or your ideas of marriage? Do they align? John and LaRonda goes first. They talk about divorce and they're not on the same page. They're not on the same page really about how many children they're going to have. They're not on the same page of what the wedding is supposed to look like. And they're not on the same page as to when will they end the terms of their agreement? You know, Sean is like, I'm not staying in a dysfunctional relationship. LaRonda's like, yeah, we're going to work it out no matter what, which is so interesting. I can't wait till next week. I'm going to hold my opinions on some things until next week. Anyway. Dr. Nicole says, well, the good thing is, so Dr. Nicole says, well, the good thing is what you focus on will grow. Meaning if you put the work and the effort into your relationship every day, you'll have good fruit. It'll grow. If you don't, then it'll die. It's just like a plant. That's my analogy. That's not her. That's not hers, but it's the truth, you know? Then we get to Jessica and Eric and 
again, they don't agree on having children because Jessica really, I don't think she really wants another child. Even if she is married, she says she doesn't want to be, she wants to do something different and she doesn't want to have a child out of wedlock again, which I agree with, but I don't think she wants any more children. I think she just wants her husband to herself and she wants to love and live life. I don't know if she had her children young and now she's just like, Hey, I just want to live. I don't want to keep starting over or what the case is. Maybe we'll find out more about that later. And then, you know, Eric is like, Hey, I play football. And during the time that I play football, I couldn't really be there. I'm ready to be there. So all they need to take all this into consideration. And do you really want to get married? And is this person the right one for you? And do you guys have the same goal in mind? And they don't all women or people period. Cause she's going to go through this mourning process, right? There are stages of grieving. She's going to go through those stages. And at some point she's going to feel like it's her fault. A lot of times us modern strong women feel like things, how we let this happen. Right. And we shouldn't have, cause we're smarter than that. And we're stronger than that. It isn't your fault. It isn't your issue. Everybody makes their own choices. Even if they say they made that choice because of something they were lacking with you, an individual still has their own choice, right? Forgive yourself for the decision you made. Learn the lesson and move forward. Do not harbor that. Do not feel like, you know, you can't trust yourself in the future. Don't beat yourself up. That's the bottom line. You made a mistake. You're going to learn from this and you're going to move forward. Just remember that. Don't blame yourself. And it doesn't take away from your intellect and it doesn't take away from your strength. It just means that you allow someone into your heart, but they were not ready to care for your heart in the way that it needed to be cared for. And you didn't know or have the tools at the time to deal with the flags that you saw. But moving forward, you will know better. You will understand better and you will care for yourself more. OK, I want to thank you guys for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the review. Put your comments below. Let me know what you think, what you thought, like, subscribe, share if you care. I will see you guys here next week. That's going to be a heavy one for me because when we start talking about parents, honey, ooh, baby. <laughs> um, I just want you to remember to love you for who you are. Thank you for letting me speak. I'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.